Hey guys, uh, more Logic Pro X tips for you. Um, now I'm going to show you the selection based processing, which is an incredibly useful feature in Logic. Selection based processing allows you to add effects or processing to just a selection of the audio on a track. Okay? Now look, here I've got this song. Let me just zoom in a bit. At the beginning, there's this guitar riff here, this green track, right? This is a guitar riff which plays, and then there, just here, the song comes in with the drums and everything. But this is the intro riff. Let's hear that. And it plays along, and then the song comes in right there with the drums and everything. Okay. So let's say I wanted to add a special effect just to this intro riff and then when the song comes in here with the drums I want that to stop so the guitar from then on doesn't have that a special effect. Well one way I could do it is on the channel for the guitar track I could add a whole bunch of plug-in effects tweak them to get the special effect I want then I could use track automation to drop those effects in just here and then drop those effects out just there so that from then on we don't hear them anymore and the effects are only on this bit of the audio. But that's a hell of a faff. I've got to go to the channel here, install all my plugin effects, tweak them to get the effect I want, then I've got to get the track automation and write in automation to drop every one of those effects in here and out here and then I'm going to have track automation on the track which means every time I move anything around I'm being asked by Logic do you want to move the automation with the region etc. It's a real faff. But with selection based processing, we can apply special effects just to this bit of audio and nothing else on the guitar track. Right? So we could have a special effect just on this intro bit of audio. So let's do that. Um, first, I need to isolate this piece of audio. So I get the scissors and I'll chop it off just there where the song comes in properly with the drums. And that isolates this intro bit of guitar. Okay, and then. I'll just trim the beginning back like that and there's my isolated bit of guitar intro there right now next thing I do is I right click on this region or if like me right click is assigned to bring up your toolbox then you control left click on the region and that brings up the region shortcut menu and you choose selection based processing and this panel appears this is the selection based processing panel and it's basically two effects racks, rack A and rack B. And into either of these racks you can install a preset from the library. These are called channel strip setting presets, right? Or you can create your own custom sets of effects and processes to build your own chain of, of effects. And then you can apply that just to the region. Okay, so look, the general theme with the selection based processing is about fixing problems in pieces of audio. So when I choose one of the racks, like I'll choose rack A and I go to load a channel strip setting, these are not the same channel strip settings that we get when we load a channel strip setting onto the actual channel for the track from the library. As I said, the general theme with these special selection based processing uh, channel strip settings is that they're about fixing problems. So there's a, a set called dynamics, which are about adjusting or improving or reducing the dynamics of a piece, a section of the audio. Then there's a utility selection about removing hum and noise. Then there's a vocal tool selection, which is about removing essing or plosives and pops. Yes, there is an effect selection as well, but as you can see, the general theme is about fixing problems on a selection of audio on a track. Fixing the dynamics, fixing noise, fixing de uh, s'ing and plosives and pops. Or we can add effects. So in rack A, I will add the effects preset stutter fast, and it adds all these effects into rack A. And all these effects have been they're tweaked in a certain way to give a stuttering fast effect. And now I can preview that on this region of audio using the preview button here. But note there's some uh, there's some um, parameters here. 
When we go do the preview, by default, it will solo the piece of audio so we hear it alone with the effect being previewed on it, and it will put a cycle range around it. Okay, so let's preview stutter fast all these effects on this piece of audio. Right? If I want to hear it in context with the rest of the music, I just de tick preview enables solo, and then I'm hearing it with all the other music when I preview. Etc. right? And then I just apply. And it applies the effect to that piece of audio, but it hasn't corrupted the audio file on the disc that this region is referring to. It simply made this special effect just for this region. And there it is, done. Okay, now I've done no other tweaks, so I can immediately do undo. Okay, now let me choose rack B, and in here I'll put another effects preset called um, Ghost in a Bottle. Different set of effects are loaded with a different sound. And let's preview that now on this region, but with solo. With solo, let's hear it. This is Ghost in a Bottle. Oh, I can switch to rack A, and this is Stutter Fast. And I can hear them, of course, in context with the rest of the music by D-Tick Solo. Stutter fast. Or ghost in a bottle. Okay, so you do it like that. Right. Now, you can build your own effects chains. Of course, any of these effects can be opened and tweaked. I can open the EQ, add EQ. I can open the tremolo, tweak the tremolo settings, etc. Right. But we can build our own effects chains as well and save them. So let me clear both these racks, choose rack A, reset, choose rack B, reset, and I'll build one of my own. So you choose the rack, I'll go in rack A, and then you just put your plugins in here as you would on the channel for the track. And all of your plugins are available, including audio unit third party ones. All right. So for example, I'll let's start with, um, we'll go with a chorus, a stereo chorus in first. Okay, and I want to solo this preview with solo one. Here we go, preview. Okay, so a nice wobbly, intense chorus. And then after that, what can we have? Let's have, um, yeah, let's have a reverb. Uh, I'm just going to go with the basic um, silver verb there, and I'll choose a hall to make it big. I say that. A bit bigger. Okay, um, let's make it even bigger, even more reflective. And a bit louder on the output and the wet. Right, so a chorusy reverb. And then I just saved that as my own preset here. Save channel strip setting as. This box appears and I'm saving inside the processing folder inside channel strip settings for logic. And I'll call this chorus big verb, right? Save. And now it's available as a preset. These are all my presets here, which live above the library selections, right? That's how easy it is to build your own presets. Okay, now, when you go to apply the effect after auditioning, there's some extra options. There's create new take. Now create new take means that when you apply the effect to the region, it will create a take folder. And inside that take folder will be the original piece of audio region unaffected and a second take, which will be the affected version. So create new take and apply. 
and we get a comp take folder like that. Now if you know how these work, and I've done a tutorial on this uh, on our channel, at the top here we have the comp master. If we open it we see inside the two takes the unaffected guitar and the affected version. Right? And we can switch between which one we're listening to. Whichever one we select is, is across the top in the comp master. That's the one we're hearing. The unaffected one or the affected one. Okay? But with comping you can do this. You can start off with, let's start off with the clean one and then after that intro lick we'll switch to the affected version by dragging across some of the affected version so it'll play that clean bit first from the from the original take then it will jump to the affected version for that bit like this let's have that a bit longer like that let's solo it then back to clean, then back to effect. So clean, affected, clean, affected, right? Clean. Oh, that wants to come back a bit there. So clean, affected, clean, affected, clean. And then back to affected, which is roughly about there, I think. And then um, clean, affected, clean, affected, and then affected for the end. So that's jumping between the clean, affected version, clean, affected. Clean, affected, clean, affected. So we get the dom dom clean, then the ba ba la affected, dom dom clean, da 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 la affected, all the way down the piece of audio. Like that. Okay, that's what you can do with comping when you use this technique. You can you if you do the create new take you get the original and the effective version. Choose between them or switch between them at different parts to build something new. Very clever that, right? Now I can't undo everything now from here with the undo here to undo that um, that um, application of the effect to the region, in, including making the take folder, because I've done some other tweaks. So I, to undo this, I need to go to the main Logic Edit menu. Undo history, find where I applied the effect, the processing. There it is, selection based audio processing, and undo. And it's undone everything. And I'm back to my clean audio, which I can further tweak and process whatever I want. Okay. Okay. And that's how that works. The create new take. Now, the other thing is when you apply, you can do add effect tail. Now with that effect tail, it works like this. If the piece of audio region doesn't butt onto another piece of audio, right, it's isolated like that. If we apply the effect without the effect tail, remember there's a reverb in this, right? So we apply. Now at the end, the effect has been added across this region, but at the end, when the region ends, the reverb will just cut. Right? Like this. Well, let's solo it. Here we go. It just cuts off. There's no tail to the reverb at the end of the region. Right? Let me undo. But if I do add effect tail and apply, it applies it and adds in an effect tail for the reverb fading out, decaying away. Like that. But that doesn't work, let me undo, that doesn't work if there's another piece of audio butted up next to it in line because this piece of audio will take over and the tail will just stop, there will be no tail even if this is ticked 
right? It won't merge a tail in with the beginning of this. This takes over and the effect just stops here, even if you've got add effect tail ticked. Add effect tail only works if there's empty space at the end for that tail to decay away into, right? So yeah, it's, it's clever, that's that. Now there's some other things when you do the application of the effect. Um, you can affect the gain. No change to the gain, loudness compensation, overload protection, not just stop uh, peaks, I'm presuming put some sort of limiter process in and normalize the whole thing if you want, okay? But that's it. It's really, really clever. Very, very clever. So you can use it for doing these wonderful effects on just little sections of audio. But as I said, the main theme of this is about fixing problems. So in the classical way you'd use this is you choose Rack A, for example, and you'd load up a vocal tool for fixing uh, pop reduction, right? Now, then, let's say, let me just zoom out. Here's my lead vocal track. Now let's say there is a very bad plosive, a pop, here on the vocal, just there, and then further down here, there's another bad plosive. Now, I don't want to add um, effects on the channel for the whole track so that there is a, a pop reduction set of processes set up, processing the entire vocal track, because I've only got a problem with a plosive just here, and just here. So what I would do is I'd chop and isolate that vocal phrase, chop and isolate that vocal phrase, or shout or whatever it is, and then choose that little bit of audio there where there is a plosive problem, bring up the selection based processing, apply the plosive reduction just to that little region, then move down here, choose that region, and again, apply the plosive reduction just to that little region. So the plosives are reduced here where there's a problem, and here where there's a problem, but the rest of the audio for the vocal is not passing through a general set of processes on the track itself, reducing plosives, which could affect the uh, overall bottom end tone of the vocal, right? So that's really what it's about, setting up something to fix a problem and applying those fixes to places along the audio where there's a particular problem. But of course, it can be used for doing special effects as we've shown, right? Okay, so let me undo that, undo that, undo that, undo. Yeah, so that is the selection-based processing. Very clever, very, very clever, and really, really useful. Check it out.